I was left speechless when Barney, an old university acquaintance, unexpectedly reached out to me, claiming he was in town temporarily and suggesting we meet up for a drink. Little did I know, what he revealed next would shake my world to its core. He confessed nonchalantly that he had been spending time with my wife for the past two weeks. Run as far and as fast as you can before I finish this drink, I calmly advised him. But mark my words, I'll catch up with you, and you won't like the outcome. Barney hesitated, swallowing hard but remaining in place. I have to give him credit, I thought. Being that audacious requires a special kind of nerve. I'm here to apologize, Barney finally said. I had no idea she was your wife. I would never knowingly betray you, my old friend. She told me that she's not married and is looking for entertainment, an old friend, Barney added hastily. The truth is, Barney and I weren't really friends, even before this amazing event. In our freshman year at university, we were just flatmates, so we had to put up with each other. I studied this subject, he was a chemistry major, while everyone else was interested in English. After the first year, he kind of hung around our group but always kept to himself. He seemed normal, but there was always something about him that bothered me. He had a habit of staring too intently and for too long, which always made me uneasy. In general, it was not very comfortable to be around him, but I had to endure it. We spent a lot of time together, even going on a group holiday after finishing university. Unfortunately, I ended up sharing a room with Barney, which wasn't the best experience. I don't remember much from that trip except for having a terrible hangover and needing a couple of days to recover. There was a heavy silence at the table. I tightened my grip on my glass, and Barney looked visibly pale, but he didn't move. I can't believe what you're saying. Stephanie would never betray me, especially not with you. She's been nothing but faithful since we got married, I asserted. Yeah, thanks for not inviting me to that, by the way, Barney retorted. You only invited close friends. Everyone from the group except me. So this is your revenge for not inviting me to our wedding six years ago? You've concocted these lies about my wife because you're still bitter? I haven't seen you in a decade, you pathetic jerk. Well, maybe none of this would have happened if you had invited me. I would have recognized her, Barney shot back, handing me his phone. He showed me a picture of Stephanie in unfamiliar underwear, smiling broadly at the camera. He scanned through a few more pictures showing them together, her joyful eyes meeting the lens. It bothered me because our bedtime relationship was always satisfying. Neither of us felt dissatisfied. That's why I tried my best to accept it. My love for her was deep, and I believed that she returned my love. I trusted Stephanie and our connection too much to fall for this deception. Nice try, Barney. Your outright forgeries are impressive, but I won't be fooled. I know Stephanie, and I believe in her. I know she wouldn't betray us. Okay, I'll prove it. Tell her you're working late. I'm sure you do that sometimes, otherwise, Steph wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet me, Barney challenged. I cringed when he referred to her as Steph, she despised it when people didn't use her full name. I made that mistake once, and I never repeated it. I should have punched him then, but instead, I decided to comply with his request, if only to silence him long enough for me to finish him off. After I spoke with Stephanie, Barney picked up his phone and said, Hi, Steph. When can I see you again tonight? I'll be there in 15 minutes. Don't forget to give Humphrey one of those tablets I gave you and some cheese. You know how he detests me. If you give it to him now, he'll be asleep when I arrive. You better be lying, you bastard. If you've harmed Stephanie or drugged my dog, you'll regret ever being born, I threatened. I didn't, did I? That's the thing. I'm just trying to demonstrate what Stephanie is like because you refuse to believe me. I'm sorry. I had no clue she was someone's wife. Especially yours. I'm sorry, mate, but you deserve better. 
As for the dog, Humphrey will be fine. He hasn't taken to me for some reason, he just barks and growls whenever he sees me. Well, at least he's loyal to me, unlike some. That pill won't hurt him, it just induces a peaceful nap. Starting to trust me now? Barney said smugly as he sipped his drink. Give me fifteen minutes, and then come home. I'll make sure we haven't crossed any lines. I couldn't do that to you. Now that I know the truth, I'm just trying to protect you from that deceitful woman. How noble of you, I snarled. He abruptly left, leaving me sitting in disbelief. I couldn't shake the feeling that he might be lying. Then it occurred to me that maybe it was all a prank organized by the guys. They must have involved Barney in this venture, and his desire to return to the band after so many years of work prompted him to play along. It seemed plausible. I wouldn't rule out that they would pop out and surprise me when I got home. That's why Barney said he wouldn't go too far tonight. Stephanie wouldn't go too far just for a joke. These guys almost fooled me. Feeling somewhat relieved, I finished my drink and headed home. As I made my way through the back door, I half expected a crowd of people to jump out and greet me. Humphrey, curled up in his basket, was unusually quiet, which began to worry me again. When I went out into the hallway, the only sound I heard was distant music. When I entered the living room, I was struck by an unexpected sight. Barney was standing in front of the fireplace with his trousers down to his ankles, and Stephanie was making advances towards him. Just as she was about to continue, they were distracted by a broken mirror. Out of surprise, she accidentally bit Barney's instrument, and shards of glass and jewelry fell on them. They both started screaming. I stood rooted to the spot, watching the scene unfold in front of me. My limbs refused to obey. When Barney collapsed to the ground and Stephanie, surrounded by shards of glass, stared at me in disbelief, I couldn't believe it. It's not what you think. Stop it, she screamed. Stephanie, is that the best excuse you can come up with? Do you have any explanation for why you were let's say, doing this to my old friend Barney? I spat at Barney, not mincing my words. With that, I turned around and picked Humphrey up, including his crib. Getting him to the hospital became my only task. He was the only one who mattered at that moment. Fortunately, the veterinarian provided exceptional assistance without waiting, despite the late hour. Although we couldn't pinpoint exactly what he had swallowed, Humphrey seemed stable, only immersed in a deep sleep. We decided that it would be better for him to stay overnight for observation to monitor all possible lingering consequences. The poor kid. I arrived home to discover Stephanie seated alone in the kitchen. Looks like your boyfriend's left. Ha, huh, shamey. Didn't take you along, considering you're of no use to me anymore. Now get out of my sight. Where's Humphrey? She asked nervously. Thanks to you, I had to take him to the vet. They're keeping him there for observation. If he's harmed in any way, you won't want to see my reaction. It'll be far worse than divorce. Trust me. Divorce? I don't want a divorce. We can work through this. It was just a mistake. We can fix it. No, we really can't. I don't give second chances, not even to you. With that, I packed my suitcase. Where are you going? Stephanie cried. You haven't even let me explain. What explanation can there be, Stephanie? Should I address you as Steph like all your ex-boyfriends? I don't have boyfriends. He's not even my boyfriend. If you'll let me explain, you owe me a lot. I don't owe you anything. I'm going to spend the night at the hotel. Tomorrow, when I get back from work, you'd better be at your mother's. Unless you're planning on moving in with Barney. I slammed the door so hard that it shook as I headed for my car. Barney appeared. Where are you going? To the hotel for the night while she packs her things. You can take her if you want, since I don't need her. That's not the point. 
I just wanted you to believe me, in her true nature. Don't go to the hotel. Stay with me. It's all my fault. Let me make it up to you. I was just trying to protect my friend. Friend? I chuckled. That's cool, but that didn't stop you from stepping in as soon as you found out, did it? Well, she was pretty convincing, and it seemed to me that this was the best way to prove it to you. Nothing else seemed to pass. I'm glad you did it. I know what would work for me right now. I stashed my bag in the trunk of the car, then delivered a blow as forceful as I could muster. It had been ages since I'd struck anyone, the pain came flooding back. But seeing him go down with just one punch made it all worthwhile. He should count himself lucky I didn't run him over, that despicable wretch. That was for Humphrey. Just wait until you see what's coming for you after wrecking my marriage and my life. Leaving him sprawled in the driveway, I pulled out of our garage, catching a glimpse of Stephanie in the rearview mirror. I half expected her to rush to Barney's side, but instead, she drew the curtains. The next morning, I checked in with the vet and was relieved to find no lasting harm done. By lunchtime I was able to retrieve him and bring him back to the office, where he settled comfortably beneath my desk. Sometimes being the boss had its perks, but it also meant burning the midnight oil. Was that why Stephanie turned to Barney? Had I neglected her? We spent plenty of time together, quality time. That's what made her betrayal so bewildering. It's why I lay awake in the hotel last night, heartbroken. Upon returning home with Humphrey, Stephanie was nowhere to be found. She had left a concise note stating, I met moms when you are ready to talk. Disgusted with the situation, I crumpled it and tossed it into the trash. She'd be waiting a while for that conversation. Feeling ashamed, I realized I needed support from my friends. I reached out to Oliver and recounted the incident. He, being the last among us to marry, his husband Connor vowed to inform the others. His reaction seemed almost as stunned as mine. Bloody Barney, what was she thinking? Later, after a few whiskeys, the rest of the group began calling or messaging me. I had a significant discussion with Callum, who lived nearby and frequently socialized with us and his wife Laura. Listen. I understand if this doesn't change anything for you, but I believe you should speak with Stephanie. She's been confiding in Laura. I'm not sure what was said, but Laura claims there's more to the story. She's furious with Stephanie on your behalf, but insists there's more than meets the eye. All she'll disclose to me is that it wasn't an affair, whatever that means. I'm not thrilled she's divulging more, but she insists you need to hear it firsthand. We were interrupted by a knock at the door, and to my disbelief, I found Barney standing outside sporting two black eyes and a clearly broken nose. I just want you to know I haven't involved the police in this. I understand you were upset and lashed out, so I won't be pressing charges. I still hope we can salvage our friendship despite our distance. We used to care about each other. Are you serious? I could never be friends with you after what you've done. You disgust me. I can't erase the image of you two from my mind. Leave before I decide to inflict more harm. He flinched and stepped back but didn't leave. I'll give you some space, but remember I'm here for you once you've cooled off. I'll always consider you a friend. I'll always have concern for you. As I shut the door, I couldn't help but wonder if he was dealing with some mental issues. Throughout the week, as I heard nothing from Stephanie, I decided to consult with a lawyer about the process of divorce. While the outlook wasn't ideal, it was within my financial means. Fortunately, my business wouldn't be impacted since it was structured to remain solely mine. However, Stephanie would likely receive a significant portion of the profits as alimony unless I could demonstrate her higher earnings. Henceforth, I resolved not to take on any additional work. What would be the use? On Friday night, my mother-in-law Morin called me. We'd always had a good relationship, and I often referred to her as mom, especially since my own parents had long been absent physically, if not technically, 
as they were busy enjoying their life in Spain. I'd always held a special affection for Morin. Hi love, I've been fretting about you. Stephanie told me to give you space, but I can't help worrying. Are you taking care of yourself? Not overdoing it with the drink, I hope. Do you want me to come over? I could whip up my lasagna for you. I know it's your favorite. The unintentional display of kindness, love, and care overwhelmed me, leading to tears streaming down my face. Oh my dear, I'm coming right away. Upon her arrival, she used her spare key to enter. I had neglected to change the locks. Soon, I found myself embraced in her arms, allowing her to comfort me as if I were a child who had fallen off a bike and scraped my knee. That foolish girl of mine has hurt you. I've always cherished you as my own, and I'm furious with her, truly I am. How could she be so heartless? I questioned. I believe she loved me as deeply as I loved her. I thought we'd start a family soon, I said. I understand, darling, and she does love you dearly. She wouldn't have spent the whole week with me in tears if she didn't, but her actions were foolish, not cruel, she said. How can you say that? Laura mentioned something similar about Callum because she's confided in Laura and me explaining what happened and why she acted as she did that's why I'm not excusing her behavior and she knows it. She's acting recklessly, but I know she loves you and only you it's best if tells us speak with her to you directly she reheated the lasagna and encouraged me to drink plenty of water no more alcohol until we've sorted everything out she insisted. It's going to be a while before the divorce is finalized, I muttered. Let's not jump to conclusions. It might not come to that, Morin said softly. But if it does, remember, you're not divorcing me. I'll still be here for you like a second mother. I'll arrange for you to talk to Stephanie at ten tomorrow morning. She left before I could protest. I slept better than I had in days, but I was still up early, pacing the house until the inevitable confrontation. My heart sank when I saw Stephanie. She looked even worse than I did with dull hair and a drawn face despite her attempt at makeup. I'm so sorry, truly sorry. Please let me explain. I'll tell you everything and then I'll leave. You don't even have to respond, I just need you to know the truth, I nodded, remaining silent. The conversation was clearly hers to control. I first encountered Barney about a month ago at the car dealership. He struck up a conversation with me and then noticed my last name. Upon learning I was your wife, he became visibly upset, expressing how close he used to be with your circle and how you had abruptly cut ties with him, leaving him bewildered. He lamented how much he missed everyone, especially you, speaking of you in glowing terms. I couldn't help but feel sorry for him. It seemed you held a significant place in his life compared to his presence in yours. While you had mentioned him a few times and I had seen photos, his vulnerability tugged at my sympathy. As the day was winding down and you had mentioned working late, when he suggested grabbing a quick drink, I saw no harm in it. I thought perhaps he might share some of your old secrets I could playfully tease you about. He was pleasant company, albeit a bit peculiar, his tendency to stare made me uneasy, but overall he was cordial. I only had one drink, and that's the extent of my memory from that first encounter. I woke up in his hotel bed the next morning, realizing what had transpired between us. My initial instinct was to get up, to seek help from the authorities, to undergo testing to prove he had drugged me. But then he returned to the room wearing a smile. He said, I think you liked it. He listened and played me the soundtrack from the video he recorded spoke as if I liked it and I didn't mind it was terrible. Who would believe me now? How could anyone believe me? I knew I was trapped by a predator you could trust me. I would go to the police with you. I know, but you'll never see me the same again. Doubts always remained, hell, even I doubted myself by that point. I could still go to the authorities, especially when the banned substances were still in my system but then he revealed his trump card. And what was that? It wasn't just me he was chasing. 
he was stalking you too. Well, naturally if he hurt you, he hurt me too. No, please let me clarify. When you were on vacation with your boys, he did the same thing to you. He gave you illegal substances and videotaped you and took photos. He showed them to me. Do you remember? You mentioned that during that trip you had the worst hangover of your life. You didn't seem to like it, you didn't look like yourself at that moment. I rushed to the sink and returned to my breakfast. I didn't push her away when she comforted me by stroking my back, and you witnessed it all. Yes, and I realized that you didn't know anything. I didn't want you to find out about all this, about him, about how it concerns both of us. So he really took advantage of both of us, didn't he? When he suggested that you would remain indifferent if I saw him a few more times while he was here, it seemed to me a small sacrifice for your peace of mind. He has already done things to me, to us, that will haunt me, but I can still protect you. He assured me that you will never know and he will provide me with all the videos and photos. And you believed him? Of course not, but I felt like I had few options, didn't I? Yes, you had options. I'd rather know than force you to do what you did to see you communicate with him that way. I didn't think he would confess to you. I sincerely believed in it. He seemed strangely fixated on you, and just wanted to be your friend. So my friend took advantage of me and then, ten years later, took advantage of my wife? How many times has he been meeting? A couple of times a week for the past few weeks. So, in total, six times? Did he drug you every time? No, only the first time. Why does that seem worse somehow? So you remember all the other times with him? Yes, it felt like it was happening to someone else, like an out-of-body experience. Was it always here, in our home, after the first time? Yes, but never in our bed. I wouldn't do that to you. He had a thing about doing it in the lounge, on the rug. I think he got off because he'd done it here, and you would never know. What about Humphrey? Well, the first time he went for him, so after that he gave him a sleeping pill. He promised me that it wouldn't hurt him. It didn't, did it? No, it didn't. But you seem to have put an awful lot of trust in the word of your abuser and absolutely no trust in your husband. You've had a shock, a dreadful shock, but I hope that we can get past this in time. You can see that I did this for us. I did it for you. I'll go back to mom's. I'm not her favorite person at the moment. I'll be there when you want to talk. Just remember how much I love you. Don't let him win. He did this to finish us, didn't he? Why else would he tell you? I don't know his plan, but don't let it work, please. She planted a kiss on my cheek and tousled Humphrey's tuft. As she departed, with her one a piece of my heart, leaving me uncertain if I could heal from this. I adored her yet harbored doubts about moving past the betrayal. She withheld a crucial detail from me, just as I had kept something from her. Later that day, the entire crew showed up, Callum, Oliver, James, and Harry. Despite some traveling from across the country, they dropped everything to support me, showing true camaraderie. Over a few beers, I divulged Stephanie's revelation to them. They shared my shock, especially regarding the events of our recent holiday. It's strange, remarked Callum. He never quite clicked with us despite our efforts. He never truly meshed. I understand what Stephanie meant now, Oliver added. He wasn't interested in fitting in with us. He only wanted to be your friend. The realization sent a shiver down my spine. Understanding his intentions, what was his motive for splitting up me and Stephanie? Harry asked. Who knows, replied Oliver. But I can't shake the feeling that this was more about you than Stephanie. Just because we lost touch? Harry questioned. No, Oliver explained. I believe it runs deeper than that. Remember how eager he was to appear as the supportive friend? Not wanting you to be alone. 
wanting to be there for you. So Harry pondered, he ends your marriage, swoops in as the supportive friend, and then what? I come out, fall in love, and we ride off into the sunset together? Who knows what that twisted jerk had in mind, but whatever it was, it won't end well for him, James growled. Excuse me, interrupted Oliver, I'm the gay one here, thank you. We don't need any more drama, Oliver. We need Connor's input on this. Can he join us? Callum suggested. He's already here, mate. He's just waiting at the hotel. Didn't want to impose, Oliver informed. Well, give him a call. He's practically family since he married you, Harry insisted. He'd be glad to help. You have no idea, Oliver agreed. And I think we could use his assistance. When Connor arrived, we worked out a strategy. I'd already made up my mind about Barney and made a decision about Stephanie. That evening, we invited Barney to our place. I think he expected to meet me alone, his face showed surprise when he saw the rest of the group. Oh, the whole gang reunited, just like in the good old days. I was hoping it would be just you and me, he said, staring at me intently. We have a lot to talk about, don't we? In any discussion we need, we can participate as friends, right? I offered him a drink, and he drank it quickly. It was clear that having so many people watching him made him nervous, so I began. Stephanie has shared her version of what happened with me. You might want to share yours. I've already told you, he started. She came up to me, said she was divorced, and asked if I wanted to have some fun. As soon as I realized that you were her husband, I confessed everything to you. You know I would never intentionally hurt you. You mean a lot to me, and you always have. Enough to give me illegal substances and beat me up? I don't understand what you're talking about. I believe you. I remember doing it on a trip with the guys when I was hungover. It wasn't just alcohol, was it? It was a long time ago, and yes, we were close during that trip. You asked me to keep this between us, but you knew what happened and enjoyed it. You loved me then, loved you? I could barely stand you. I despise you now. Believe me, did you enjoy it? I didn't even know this had happened. You're just upset. I know that's not what you meant. I saw that you were a little out of sorts, so I decided to help you relax a little. I knew that if I could get you to relax, you would reveal your true feelings and have fun. That's exactly what happened that night in your arms was the happiest of my life. I've replayed it in my head countless times. I know you are too. I sat there in shocked silence. Barney was evidently grappling with some deep-seated psychological issues. He seemed to harbor feelings for me that I hadn't even been aware of. So, what was your plan? Barney asked Callum, speaking slowly to mask his growing horror. I needed to end things with him and Stephanie. It was all her fault. She interfered, she stole him from me. Don't you see? I think I do, said Harry. And then you could be the hero who exposed her for what she is. So you thought I would forgive you, but not her? Well, I knew deep down that it was me you truly loved, not her. I knew getting involved with her was a risk. I knew it would hurt you. I knew you'd be jealous seeing me with her, but I also knew once you realized, it freed you to be with me. Absolutely insane, muttered Oliver. And yet you had to drug her, just like you did to me, only the first time with her. I hate to say it but she really got into it without much persuasion, he said, noticing our friends tensing up. His gaze shifted to me. I'm not making excuses. She was enthusiastic. She even reached out to me a couple of times. I had to do it, but I didn't enjoy it. It was a means to an end. I only wanted you. I've always only wanted you. The room fell silent at this admission. Stephanie wouldn't do that, Harry remarked. I have her messages. I'll show you, Barney said, 
handing me her phone. All the evidence was there, her expressing desire to meet him. There was no coercion after the first encounter. She seemed to be enjoying their secret affair, perhaps even more than he was. You know, Callum interjected, that behavior has a name. It's called trauma bonding. I believe you don't seem surprised by what Barney confessed, Oliver observed, glancing at me. I'm not, I replied. Remember, I witnessed it firsthand. I've been married to her for many years, and I know her demeanor when she's involved. I could tell she was deriving pleasure from being with him. I can't deny that, Barney interjected. I've been truthful with you. Now, surely that should count for something, right? Well, I said, it'll definitely be noted in court, won't it? Connor. I called out to Connor as he entered from the kitchen. You haven't met my husband, Connor, have you? Barney, Oliver added, Detective Inspector Connor O'Brien. Did you hear everything? Why? I inquired of Connor. Yes, I heard it all, he confirmed, turning to Barney and reciting his rights. No, you can't. Don't let them take me. We need to be together. I did it for you. That's ironic, Stephanie said. The exact same thing, I whispered, feeling the embrace of my remaining friends. You know, Oliver remarked, both you and Stephanie were victims of Barney. We were, but despite her objections, she might have been coerced the first time, but she willingly returned. She pleaded for more. You've seen the messages, yes, but still, no. She should have confided in me, trusted me. Instead, she found a way to indulge in something different and have a convenient excuse for it. You want to know what I saw when I caught them together, don't you? The final piece of the puzzle? The others nodded. She is completely enjoying what is happening. There was no coercion. Maybe she was just trying to deal with a terrible situation, Callum suggested. Maybe so, but would you ever be able to forgive Laura if you caught her with another man? Would you ever be able to get past that, knowing that she wants to repeat it? No, Callum admitted. I don't think I could. So that's it, Harry remarked. Are you going to let him triumph, tear you apart? Oh, Harry, we're all losers here. There are no winners. I may have acted hastily when I decided to give up so quickly, but I knew there was no turning back for me. Yes, I knew she was attacked first. We were both attacked, but we didn't remember anything about it. However, she returned to him, and although you can call me insensitive, I couldn't help but notice it. I couldn't ignore the messages, the deception. No, it wasn't something I could put up with. Life and love shouldn't be so complicated, at least not in my life. Divorce seemed to me the only way out. Barney's mental state rendered him unfit for trial, leading to his confinement with little prospect of recovery. He grapples with self-inflicted torment, fueled by lingering affection for me, rumored tears shed nightly in my absence. Morn recently relayed Stephanie's continued mourning over our lost connection. Stephanie confessed to her mother a newfound thrill in the taboo of her encounters with Barney. It wasn't love but an exploration of her adventurous side, previously untapped in our relationship. She discovered desires she hadn't acknowledged before, finding arousal and submission to Barney, despite lacking physical attraction to him. Her belief that she acted in my interest still disturbs me deeply and may forever taint my view of her. She's in therapy now, exploring this aspect of herself while holding on to hope for a reconciliation. Since the divorce, life has been tranquil. Humphrey and I are content, and I trust love will find me again in due time, it's a necessity for my well-being. 